Don't forget to like, subscribe, and support the channel financially. We want to reach 3,000 likes and 300 comments. Then Ryu smirked from behind his mask and said, Put away your pathetic act. Did you think pretending to fight each other would make me let my guard down? Didn't I warn you not to have any funny ideas? Gu Yun Seung shouted, Yo, you fucking bastard! With things as they were, there was no turning back, and the black chains intended to bind Black Scythe were his chance to escape. But Ryu, who could read thoughts and see seven seconds into the future, wouldn't just stand there and take it. Then Ryu, like a ghost, moved behind Gu Yeon Seung, already out of the chain's reach, and said, It was a good idea, but you picked the wrong opponent. As Ryu swung his scythe, Gu Yeon Seung's wand was cut off his forearm. Feeling the crisis, the male actors charged at the black scythe, but they were no match for Ryu, and with a single strike, the heads of actors floated in the air and their bodies dropped like cut strings. Overwhelmed by his power, Gu Yun Seung collapsed to the ground. Already crippled, he couldn't even dream of resisting. Ryu calmly surveyed the scene. Gu Yun Seung was shivering with his arms trembling, and the shocked eyes of Seo Arin were visible behind him, and one was missing. But it was no problem. He had already sensed her through his ability to detect presence, and when Ryu struck the air behind him with his scythe, a sharp scream erupted. Hong Sun Ah, trembling with her legs, appeared as the invisibility skill wore off, and her thighs were pierced by Ryu's scythe like a fork, and with a forceful tug, blood spattered as both thighs were cleanly severed. Gu Yeon Seung couldn't bear to look at her suffering. Then Ryu said, Seo Arin, it's our first time meeting in reality. Seo Arin's eyes widened in surprise, then rounded in realization, and said, Yes, nice to meet you, Black Scythe Nim. Gu Yeon Seung looked at her with a face that said he couldn't believe what he was seeing. Hong Sun Ah, while groaning and also glared at Seo Arin, and said to herself in shock, Seo, Seo Arin knows Black Scythe? How could that beach know Black Scythe? Could it be, at that moment, a common assumption arose in both of their minds? Could it be that Beach asked Black Scythe for support? If so, then the ones who actually fell into a trap are us? Although Ryu knew they were misunderstanding, he didn't care, because they were going to die soon anyway. And he said to himself, of course, I won't be the one to kill them. Ryu intended to leave their judgment to Seo Arin, as it would be more satisfactory for her that way. Then he said, Seo Arin, I'll give you the opportunity to kill these two, and if you choose to let them live, I won't stop you so you can decide their fate. Surprised by the unexpected offer, Seo Arin's eyes widened. Gu Yun Seung and Hong Sun Ah felt the same, and realizing their lives hung on Seo Arin's decision, they quickly pleaded. Gu Yun Seung said, Ah, Arin, no, Miss Arin, please save me. I'm Gu Yun Seung. We did projects together, remember? Please remember our past relationship and spare me just this once. Sun Ah said, Shut up, Senior Gu. If we're talking about projects, I've done far more with Arin. Arin, it's me, your lifelong friend, Sun Ah. Think of the memories we shared together, huh? Please save me. I don't want to die yet. Gu Yun Xiong said, Look at that crazy botch whining like that. Miss Arin, don't be fooled. She's trash. Do you know how much she badmouthed you behind your back? She said, when did I ever? Don't believe a word Senior Gu says, it's all lies. Gu Yan Seung added, wow, such a shameless botch. To think such a person claims to be a friend. I'm clearly the better choice, Sana said. Ha, I can't believe this. Who was the one shaking their hips thinking about doing that stuff when Aaron comes? Which animal was that? He shouted. Me, when? Don't make up things, you batch. The two raised their voices. C.O. Aaron, now holding the power of life and death, deliberated. But her deliberation didn't last long. There was no need to think about trash. And she said, both of you are eyesores. I've made my decision. Gu Yun Sheng inquired. That, that means you'll save us, right? Suna said, huh? Aaron, we were close friends, right? Huh? Despite their desperate looks, Seo Aaron's gaze was cold, and the cooldown was ready. Then Seo Aaron summoned her fairies and ordered, kill them both, and the beam aimed at their heads burned their faces beyond recognition. Ryu felt a sense of pride at the sight, and he said to himself, initially worried about the lives of those who tried to rape her, she has changed a lot. In fact, this was the second time he saved her since the first incident with Huang Yong Min's group. Seo Arin seemed to know that fact as well, bowing her head towards Ryu and said, Thank you, Black Scythe Nim. You saved me again this time. I can't express my gratitude in words. Thank you so much. Ryu inquired, Do you believe I am the real Black Scythe? She replied, Of course. How could I not recognize the weapon wielded by Black Scythe, although the outfit and voice are different, but everything else, 
including the aura, was similar to Black Scythe's. That was why C.O. Aaron firmly believed he was the Black Scythe. Ryu felt relieved at her reaction, and he said to himself, it was a good decision to transform. If it were my original physique, I might have been suspected. In fact, Ryu has transformed into a lost yak, wearing a mask. Hence, he's taller and more muscular now. Then C.O. Aaron said, I want to repay you, but I can't think of anything I could give. I've thought about it a lot but it seems I don't have much to offer. Ryu said, I didn't do it for the reward, so don't worry about it. She said, I understand. I feel bad for asking this, but how did you come here? I'm really curious, so please don't take it the wrong way. It's understandable to be curious, especially since he appeared right at the moment of crisis and he was none other than the Black Scythe. Ryu, who had already thought of an excuse, replied without hesitation. It was a coincidence, she inquired. Excuse me? Ryu said, I happened to see you entering this place. I followed you in and wanted to say hi. That's how I came to know about the situation. And he added, It seems they were trash, preying on other players. Seo Aran lowered her head, looking at the bodies, and said, That's right. And I was unaware. Ryu, as if to help get rid of her gloomy thoughts, removed the bodies using the trace eraser. Then he said, Forget what happened. Move forward, looking ahead. Think only of yourself. Don't mind others. And while I'm at it, let me give you some more advice. Be wary of people. Enemies aren't always far away. They're often closer than you think. Never let your guard down. Always be vigilant and doubtful. It wasn't something someone seeking Seo Aran's trust would say, but Ryu Min was confident. He believed that advising her this way would make her doubt others instead of him. Sure enough, Seo Aran was reminded of two people, and Sang Cheol and Heavenly Demon. Then she said, Thank you for the advice that's both straight and valuable. I only receive help from you, Black Scythe. I don't know how I could ever repay you. Ryu said, As I said before, there's no need to repay me. If I had wanted something from you, I would have asked when I first saved you. Seo Aran's eyebrows twitched. Saying he wanted nothing from her might have struck her pride. Ryu said to himself, This should be enough to achieve my goal. As if sensing the timing, Ryu turned around and left a parting message saying, If we leave together, it might raise suspicions. So come out after five minutes. There's no evidence, so there's no need to call the police. With that, Ryu left the room. Seo Aaron stood still, looking in the direction where Black Scythe disappeared, planning to wait for five minutes as instructed. During that time, Seo Aaron mulled over Black Scythe's advice, and she said to herself, Black Scythe is right. I've been trusting Mr. Bodyguard and the CEO too much. She had already harbored negative feelings towards Heavenly Demon. Having tried to use her as a hostess before, it was inevitable. And she added, if that's the case with the CEO, then his loyal subordinate, the bodyguard, and he might act on unethical orders without hesitation. That meant she could be backstabbed at any time, especially considering that An Sang Cheol had been assigned as a surveillance agent in the first place. Then she said, maybe I've been too naive, trusting the people around me. Was it because she was almost betrayed by a fellow actor she trusted? Or was it because of Black Scythe's advice? We don't need to know the answer, we just need to know that doubt and wariness began to grow in Seo Aran's heart. At the same time she became certain of one thing. Her heart was pounding for only one person, Black Scythe. Mid-August has passed, and during this time, Heavenly Demon steadily took care of the trash as planned. Already nearly 300 trash have been taken care of by him. Like Heavenly Demon, Ryu was also focused on cleaning up the trash, and in a warehouse different from where Ma Kyung Rock operated, Ryu used a trace erasing skill, and five corpses disappeared. And he said, although I can't gain dark magic, I can plunder items, magic stones, unique material items, store equipment items, and various miscellaneous items. He added, I should create some unique equipment by combining these up. Currently, there are unique materials on the market, but no unique equipment for sale, because no one knows how to make them. Since not enough unique design blueprints have been released yet, Rue said, no fool would post unique equipment for sale even if they don't know how to use it. Would anyone sell such precious unique equipment just to make some money? Ryu also had no intention of making and selling unique items. As he was wealthy enough, with PP's stock soaring, ensuring wealth for three generations, and the reason Ryu was making unique equipment was one, to distribute them to potential future allies. Then he said, it's better for me if they survive. And I decided to make items for Min Juri and Christine first. An equipment with agility for Min Juri and intelligence-based unique items for Christine. He added, ah, I should also make something for Ma Kyung Rock so he doesn't feel left out. In fact, there are so many people to take care of. 
Russell, Seo Aaron, An Sang Choil, Heo Tai Sok, Jo Yong Ho, and Yamti as well. But then Ryu realized it was impossible, as there weren't enough materials to take care of everyone. So Ryu decided to only take care of those he would bring to the 20th round. And he said, I should at least take care of Min Juri and Christine for now. The rest, I'll think about it later. Then a call came from Heavenly Demon. 